Hey YouTubers, this is Christopher Wanamaker here doing an updated 24 hour survival bug out bag video with the bug out bag that you see here uh, all laid out right in front of me on this table. Uh, this bug out bag specifically, I built uh, about a year ago uh, a 24 hour bag, high quality 24 hour bag for both my best friend Anna, my older brother Stuart, and my younger brother Greg. Unfortunately, uh, my brothers are not uh, you know, too much of wilderness, outdoorsy people. They're more indoorsy, watch TV shows, movies, and play video games. Uh, they don't go outdoors very much. So my younger brother, once the bag was complete and I was ready to give it to him, pretty much told me he did not want it. And if I gave it to him, left it uh, at his place, it would either sit in a closet collecting dust or he would uh, might sell it behind my back and use the money for rent and utilities. So I took the bug out bag back from him, uh, brought it home uh, in creating this uh, layout video for you. And you're interested in not only getting yourself a 24 hour high quality survival bug out bag that keep preferably in your vehicle trunk. So it's always close to where you are. Even if you drive far away from home, you're at work or school or grocery store you have something if a natural disaster shit hits the fan situation happens which is happening more frequently in our country we're having more natural disasters that are becoming more frequent and more extreme probably because of global warming and uh, you know uh, human impact so another reason to get more prepared I think preferably if it was up to me it would be by law every new vehicle from a car dealership uh, would come with a uh, one or two 24 hour survival bug out bags in, uh, in the trunk of the vehicle when you buy the vehicle from the car dealership or a bug in bag or rubber made tub uh, emergency kit uh, for every you know home you buy from a company that uh, I believe that that should be made by law having you know first aid supplies water filtration systems uh, LED waterproof hand cranking flashlights tenting systems uh, at you know add your change of clothes add some cash money um, you know, um, a thumb drive with a, a, a password system, encryption on it, uh, and then digitally scan, make scans of all your important documentation, marriage certificate, birth certificate, uh, um, a driver's license, ID cards, uh, uh, insurance uh, um, documents, everything. Because, I mean, I know um, Hurricane Katrina victims, I've read articles on it, that those even those who had insurance took years to get their insurance claims uh, and get the money because when they lost everything they lost all forms of identification so you know having digital scans on a thumb drive and like a you know sealed type ziploc bag or fully waterproofed um, you know thumb drive case or something like that is a really good idea you know and anytime your major documents update update that thumb drive with all your documents as well with an encryption password on it. So it's a little difficult, even if it gets stolen, uh, it's difficult for somebody else to get into, but things like that. So I think every adult on the planet, um, you know, um, older teenager, young adult, parent, should have a minimum of a 24 hour bug out bag per person, uh, just to be prepared. And it's not just for natural disaster, shit hits the fan situations. They can be used for uh, recreational hiking and camping. This is my 72 hour 60 pound survival bug out bag uh, that I have gone hiking and camping multiple miles with. So it's not just, and that's a good way, once you get these you have to field test them. You need to, you know, grab them, take them out, uh, see, you know, what do you have, how to use it, how to, you know, put, set things up, tear them down, uh, what maybe can you get rid of or uh, add to it, you know, uh, or how to uh, repack it to uh, where it's, uh, it fits better on your back. So you need to be able to not only have a bug out bag, but uh, you know know how to use it, know what you have and how to use it. So you have to field test it. Uh, and so su spring, summertime, hiking, camping is a good way to do that. So uh, other than that, um, I'm going to go over all this stuff that's in the bag. With all this inside this backpack, this backpack weighs a total of 38 pounds. Uh, once you, it's a really good high quality backpack with a heavy duty and really good cushioning waist strap and chest strap and shoulder straps. So once you actually put it on your body and fully strap it down, 
it takes about 20 pounds off your back. So a 38 pound pack that feels like 18 to 20 pounds once you pull it on. So like a you know high school backpack pretty much with all your textbooks in it. So, uh, so this is the three day Condor Assault Pack backpack. I got this from Glenn's surplus store off the exit uh, 140 of the I-25 on Nevada. And these types of backpacks, solid color, are about 85 bucks uh, for solid green, black, or desert tan. Camouflage versions, uh, you can find at different locations and they're different pricings. Uh, I've seen them between $130 and $180 for the camouflage version, just like my, mine is. So uh, I've added some things to this bag, a woodland um, uh, entrenching tool pouch to put my entrenching tool folding shovel inside, 50 degree uh, sleeping bag for like 15 bucks with a stuff sack from Sportsman Warehouse, multiple medium size uh, S rings to attach it uh, to the web strapping on the backpack, a um, woodland camo, um, what we call waste pack, it's what military people call them. Uh, it's like waterproof material, like rain poncho nylon inside. That's where I put my personal hygiene uh, stuff into. A one core canteen um, carrying pouch. And a um, machete, Ontario machete uh, molly um, sheath with two little mini pockets to keep like lighters or little pocket knives on. On the very top, I have this $80 four panel waterproof um, solar folding out solar panel USB connector right there. And then the other side. Uh, a case of ESS's is uh, brand new iPro um, clear lens sunglass lenses with uh, cloth and case um, you got a chest strap right here heavy-duty cushioning uh, even a little hidden pocket behind this uh, waist strap uh, cushioning pad right here a little hidden pocket right there a zipper case right that's where the um, uh, two and a half liter camelback bladder with straw uh, comes out attached to this little mini S uh, D ring right there waist strap really heavy duty and, and that's about it for the backpack itself besides opening it up and showing it so bottom here pockets Little zipper pouch uh, uh, with netting uh, right there, more netting for little slip-in pouches right there. That's where I usually put like my Gerber and uh, slingshot and lighter uh, stuff. Near just left of this entrenching tool pouch is this little pouch uh, pocket, side pocket right here. That's where I put all my first aid items. Just above the uh, entrenching tool pouch, and uh, one of the one of two of the main compartments, with even these little unique uh, pockets and straps to for uh, radios. So you have a pair of radios, multiple thing, uh, little pockets there, and that's where I put like the VS17 signal panel and the rain poncho and the survival manual in a Ziploc bag. And then the main compartment itself. Uh, two big pockets uh, with web netting uh, uh, at the top and bottom. Uh, and then the interior is pretty nice because it also has these um, hor two horizontal, two vertical, strap down, uh, linked uh, belt buckle um, straps, so like cargo straps. So even if I have all certain items in here and they're all strapped down, even if this like the zipper breaks and the whole backpack uh, flies open, 
uh, nothing on, that is strapped down is going to fall out. So another nice feature to that, to this backpack. And then on the bottom portion of the, of the backpack, on both left and right side of the backpack, are these two pocketed size uh, pouches. So side pouches with strap webbing. That's what all these other items are attached to. So that's pretty much the three day Condor Salt Pack uh, backpack itself. Really high quality. One of my favorite backpacks um, that I've found so far. I've tried half a dozen different types. Um, and then I'll go over the items here from left to right of the actual items that go inside this uh, survival bug out bag. So first item is size 9 military flyer gloves, fabric on the top, leather uh, on the uh, palm of the hands. So uh, size 9, those are good gloves, good winter gloves. Uh, one second. And then um, brand new, a pair of military green wool socks. Military gator neck. It's pretty much a stretchy fabric scarf. Put it up over a head, pull it down, um, and then, you know, here I'll do it. So, stretchy cloth scarf, and you can also do full faced. So, heavy winter storms, sandstorms, things like that. Fleece uh, uh, cap, military fleece cap, gray. So I do a combo and then add goggles or sunglasses or something like that. You have full face coverage. So, uh, FM 21-76 survival army manual from October 1970. There's also a garbage bag in here in the Ziploc bag. Uh, it's good to have a paper copy in case your electronics go down, but if you want to use your electronics, as long as your phone is still charged and still works, another good thing to get is a free download of Survival Manual and also the American Red Cross First Aid app. Cool thing about these things are, you know, once you initially download them, there's maybe one update per year, uh, but otherwise you do not need Wi-Fi, internet connection, you don't need a phone signal at all. If you're in the middle of the wilderness and there is no phone signal, as long as you have those apps already downloaded on your phone and your phone's charged, you just click on the app, it'll pull it up like the first aid app. It'll pull up and then it like downloads all this information, all these different categories on the hard drive of your phone. Good thing for, every, I think every smartphone should come with those two specific apps already pre on the phone in my opinion, but has like allergies uh, for different ca uh, categories, allergies, asthma attack, bleeding, broken bone, burns, choking, concussion, head injury, CPR, unresponsive, not breathing, diabetic emergency, distress, flu, heart attack, heat stroke, hypothermia, um, poisoning, harmful substances, seizure, uh, shock, stings and bites, strain and sprains, stroke, unresponsive breathing. So all these categories that you click on one of these, um, you know, let's see, choking, and then it will give you detailed, even little like gifts of, you know, what to do step by step, step one, step two, step three. So it's a really great thing to have on your phone for emergency uh, use. So there's another suggestion for you. Then I have these uh, never used ESS uh, goggles. They have the sunglass lenses in them right now. It has a thing of clear lenses that go with it and then an actual carrying case as well. So there's those never used. Uh, then food wise, um, so some ideas for good food for a bug out bag. Uh, freeze dried uh, mountain house or similar other um, products. Uh, dehydrated uh, food pretty much you just add hot water preferably but you could use cold water this is beef stroganoff with noodles 11 grams of protein 260 calories for one serving so they have different sized ones uh, you can get these around eight bucks a piece um, so there's one idea 
MREs, uh, meals ready to eat, military food. Uh, every MRE in the eight to 10 buck range, um, super sealed airtight packets come, uh, most of them uh, for any type of food that's uh, better warm, they have magnesium heating packets. It's like a pouch with a little magnesium powder thing. You add water to it, the water uh, interacts with the magnesium, heats up, and uh, then you have a heat packet. Um, so, you know, not only a way to keep yourself warm, but also a uh, decent amount of food. This is a beef a patty, and it has a, almost every MRE is right around 2,500 calories. A full box is usually 50 to 60 bucks at surplus stores. A uh, full box comes with a dozen MREs. I usually have two boxes here in my apartment and one box in the trunk of my car for emergency ration food. Um, so there's an idea. Trail mix is another good idea. Protein bars, Nutri-Grain bars, um, dehydrated fruit, um, oatmeal, oatmeal boxes like multo meal, oatmeal packets. Uh, put those in a Ziploc bag as well and keep make them last longer. Can uh, you know soup, uh, cans uh, item, canned soup, canned vegetables, canned fruits, uh, tuna, whether it be like the uh, airtight sealed packets or even canisters, preferably the ones with vegetable oil in them, because the vegetable oil you puncture a hole and uh, you pretty much get like a piece of cloth, to, uh, uh, you know, a paper towel, uh, uh, kite string, twine, paracord soak it in the vegetable oil and then light the uh, cloth and then you have pretty much a um, uh, oil candles what you have that will last for many many hours so um, what else uh, peanut butter another good thing you know think a small jar of peanut butter that'll last a long time so things like that that will last on the shelf for a long period MREs if they don't get no rodents get into the boxes or the air uh, tight packages those can last on the shelf for 10 to 13 years. I, I know, I was a supply sergeant so in the Army. So, um, so that's a good thing when it comes to food. Many different really good suggestions for you. Uh, then this bag specifically has this. This is a Raiders tent with rain fly and steaks. At the very end of this video, I will pull up the pictures of the different types of tents and some other products that uh, I am going to make suggestions for you know, um, your building of your bug out bag if you're unaware of certain products. So substitute items that could be better than some of the stuff I have here. But this is a one person tent. Uh, it's very compact. I mean this is the size of a blow up pillow. So uh, very good lightweight one person tent with rain flat stay. So I'll, I'll pull up the picture on, on my TV here in a little while. Static V. Uh, blow up like uh, a little air mattress like yoga mat um, This was about $60. They range 45 ish to you know $80 range depending on the size This is good for a person. It's about five foot five foot ten or something like that five ten um, They also have smaller versions and uh, in, uh, You know taller versions uh, besides static V static V is one of the uh, three best on the market right now. They also say there are some of the uh, Thermarest versions in a C to Summit are some other good version of little air mattresses um, that uh, are high quality made as well. So the, I got this for 60 bucks at Sports and Warehouse. This is a $10, uh, it's a, you can see it's a stuff sack, but it's actually a $10 um, blow up pillow that I got from um, Sports and Warehouse. Most expensive one that I have in my bug out bag, my personal bug out bag, is a Thermarest $46, very comfortable fabric uh, blow up pillow. So, uh, this is uh, made by Ivation. Uh, um, Secure also makes a very similar one. They're like in the $25 to $30 range. Uh, fully waterproof, 45 feet deep, uh, LED, and, uh, hand cranking, and solar. Uh, flashlight so hand crank probably one of my uh, most one of my two favorite uh, flashlights so uh, low high and signal fully waterproof 45 feet deep and I have the little paracord lanyard so uh, luminade this is they were on Shark Tank uh, they went to they were uh, um, two female college students uh, that were there many years ago uh, during the major Haiti earthquake, saw how important electricity, lighting was and everything. So they created this product. It's 
It's called Luminate, so very compact solar um, with LED lights, fully waterproof. I can duct this whole thing in water and blow up. So I blow this up and then the LED light right there with different settings, high and low and stuff. Uh, they have a newer version with signal and that uh, LED light reflects off this material and now you have a mini lantern anywhere from uh, what was it like eight hours of light on um, high to 14 hours on low so and then a little uh, SD ring to attach it to the outside of my bug out bag so there's that there's another version here actually they've got a full uh, square uh, uh, version of uh, blow up lantern so this is fully charged has a light indicator how charged it is this one even has a USB connector to it uh, and a carrying strap as well so this is the Luminade pack light max you can even get versions with uh, different color lights for like pool parties and stuff now the only improvements I could, I would definitely make the Luminade is their strap right here has these three pinholes and only one right here. I would do one with all three to make it a stronger connection. And unfortunately their USB, the end where your phone would be connected is the where you actually plug it in instead of a normal USB connector. So I would either have them change this out to this actually being a USB instead of the mini connector or I would have uh, this kind of lantern with both versions so a version I could connect a normal USB and attach my phone to or the other version where I can attach the smaller uh, connection and um, hook this up to something that takes the USB so that's my personal memory or they come uh, they should come with an adapter uh, for the USB to put it on here to have the uh, little smaller tip in that you need to connect to your phone. So, uh, and then solar charger with a little light saying that it's charging in the sunlight. So, uh, that's a uh, another Luminate. Uh, it's L U M I N and then the word A Luminate. Uh, it's a great product. Uh, then let's see. Um, I also have half a dozen uh, red glow sticks. They're about a dollar seventy-five, two dollars a piece. Life Straw. Uh, it's a water, heavy-duty fabric water filter straw. Like five hundred and fifty gallons of water uh, through this thing. Um, it, the plastic version is in the twenty twenty-five dollar range. There's a aluminum version for fifty, and there's a water bottle version for about thirty. At like Sportsman Warehouse, Walmart. Amazon, EarthEasy.com, places like that. So heavy duty filter straw, I have used this many times in the Pacific Northwest at the um, uh, hiking to multiple waterfalls and creeks and I just pretty much either drink straight from the creek or the waterfall or the stream or river or whatever or fill up a water bottle, put this inside the water bottle or camelback bladder as well. Uh, and you know, instead of drinking straight from it, not putting in iodine tablets or water purification tablets if I don't have any, just fill up my container, put this inside of it, and drink straight from it. So, and for every one that you buy, they take half the proceeds and actually uh, either um, they pretty much purchase some of their own life straw products and send it to an Africa student in Africa to either use the products or they'll uh, instead of that they'll also send um, uh, for every one you buy they'll provide an entire year's supply worth of fresh water to an Africa student. In so that's pretty cool. Uh, water, I have a thing of water purification tablets, uh, Colgan's. Uh, the thing about this, a lot of people don't know this, as soon as I open this container, I have to use all of this within six months. If I don't, then after six months, uh, all the tablets inside become poisonous. So it's a good thing to know. Little, like it's kind of like an Altoids sort of tin canister uh, filled with uh, dryer lint to help start an uh, easy fire. Uh, then uh, this Gerber, this is from Ozark Trail from Walmart, is like 14, 15 bucks, uh, uh, multi-tool, so there's that. Uh, Hoffman 15, uh, quick action, uh, really sharp, strong knife, that was like, um, I want to say 30 bucks. A 
utensil multi-tool. Uh, these are a couple bucks and you can find them all over the place. Walmart, Sports and Warehouse, things, things like that, REI, and they actually come apart. So they also have a can opener and a knife uh, in here, but good thing to have some sort of utensils if you're cooking. A uh, little pocket knife, uh, magnesium uh, flint bar uh, um, with a little uh, blade, so uh, pretty much you know, take off some of the magnesium and then use the um, ferrule rod and uh, create sparks and light the magnesium. So, uh, Zippo lighter fluid. And so, another good way to start a fire. Uh, Ziploc bag full of 22 non scented uh, candles that last about two to two and a half hours a piece. So, another form of lighting or cooking little strands of meat if you're trying to stay hidden but you need to cook food. Um, a uh, three canisters of Sterno cooking fuel that has a cooking gel inside. Um, I use that in conjunction with the uh, Firebox Nano folding. So it's like that first, and then you unfold it. Now you get yourself a little cooking stove with these adjustable uh, little legs. So I move these out of the way put in that, light it, and then one quart canteen, military canteen with a canteen tin cup, and then ready to boil. So ready to cook something and boil, whether it be oatmeal or pot of tea or coffee or whatever. Um, so there's that cool system. Uh, the, the Firebox Nano, it's like 40 bucks for steel, 70 bucks for titanium version. Uh, Colgan's 4-in-1, uh, it's a whistle, it's a compass, it's a thermometer, and it's a magnifying glass, which can also be used in direct sunlight to help start a fire. A pen, uh, VS-17 panel, this is what military use on military patrols and stuff. What this is, is pretty much almost like a rain poncho uh, cover, on you know, one side's dark, keeps you out of the rain and stuff. The other side's a uh, neon orange. That would uh, help, you know, signal like aircraft or whatever for, from far away. So this is a good thing to have to signal people, put darker items, rocks and sticks on top and create like an SOS signaling. So good thing uh, to have and use uh, in emergency situations. A little um, uh, black cat uh, firework six pack different colored smoke bombs. Uh, these uh, last about 20 seconds a piece, so another good way to either signal people or also to, um, you know, scare away animals who have heightened sense of smells like coyotes, wolves, uh, cougars, bears. They don't like the smell of smoke, so uh, this is another thing that could scare them away if they're in your area. Uh, first aid kit, I have like a, I think it's a build of 60 piece first aid kit. Uh, didn't really add much to it, a little field dressing, a uh, credit card folding knife. So that's, I think that's a uh, nice item to have with a first aid kit. Now this item here is pretty interesting. This is called Click Heat, and they have different sizes. They have bigger sizes like you put over your shoulders and on your back and all that. And what it is, is it's like a, I believe it's what it is. Um, is either acetone acetate or sodium acetate inside of here. Uh, gel liquid with this little metal coin that you click kind of like a Snapple lid clicker and once you do that the metal friction with the gel has a reaction and it crystallizes and heats up for 45 minutes but it's reusable so instead of just consequently those uh, one-time use hand warmers you can get this reusable version of uh, uh, these size ones comes in pack of three for like 15 bucks and then once you want to reuse it and it's uh, all done, it's not warm anymore, you put it in a cloth in boiling water for about 20 minutes and then the um, uh, crystallization will turn back into a liquid, let it cool down and it's ready to reuse. So click heat, really cool item to uh, have and use for a bug out bag. Uh, also have uh, dude wipes, pretty much baby moisturizer baby wipes. These are biodegradable uh, versions, so they're uh, good for the environment um, as well. Personal hygiene uh, uh, pack. So I have a micro fleece towel. Um, 
I have a little bar of soap, I have a bottle of hand sanitizer, and two little packs of eco-friendly laundry detergent so I could do a load of laundry out in a creek or lake or whatever, riverbed. Um, and then, but of course you add what, whatever personal um, hygiene products you need to add for yourself, you know, condoms, uh, um, t little, you know, folding toothbrush, little thing of toothpaste, um, uh, 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 lip balm, um, you know, whatever, you know, little bottle of shampoo, things like that. Playing cards to keep your mind busy. Uh, grand trunk, a nylon, $80 nylon sheet hammock with little D-rings attached to the nylon sheet, a uh, little, um, uh, mini, um, Tree straps uh, come with this as well, stuff sack. Uh, holds up to like 300 pounds, so a hammock in there. Um, folding and trenching tool shovel. So there are military versions. Uh, this is a civilian version from Sports and Wear. It's like 15 bucks or something. There are military versions for $50, $60 at surplus stores. Those are usually, they're more durable, but they're heavier as well, So, but they'll last a lot longer too. So a civilian version of a folding shovel. Uh, so VS, uh, VSSL uh, canisters. These are kind of cool and I think are really good to have in the vehicles besides the bug out bags as well. There's different versions. You can get a, um, you know, just a, a bottom and top lid with a all hollow inside and you fill it with whatever you want. You have a, the aluminum uh, emergency shelter sh uh, sheet version. Um, this is a first aid version. So, you know, lid comes off. And then you have first aid supplies. You have a compass, oil compass on the bottom. Uh, the very top is actually comes with batteries uh, and it's a flashlight and it has high, low, and even a SOS pattern signaling. So you could go leave it out just like that and hopefully someone sees it as you see the pattern. signaling somebody then of course you can also use it like that as well uh, this canister is supply so it comes with these little tiny canisters so you got the bottom which is the compass on the other side is a bee wax candle uh, you got the flashlight this uh, bigger like double canister it has first aid mini medical kit uh, you got wire saw trail uh, markers, these little like um, thumbtacks with glow-in-the-dark arrows on them, uh, and then you have a whistle in here as well. Uh, rope and razor blades, fishing tackle, uh, can opener and water purification, and fire starter and mirror. So, and then you just put it all back together. One second. They even have a zombie apocalypse version where you take the bottom off and it's like a five, six inch spike inside. Um, they have a, a version where you take the bottom and top lids off and they're foldable uh, flask cups. So these, depending on which one you get, are anywhere from um, $60 to 100 bucks a piece. So you can even get a version where it's empty and you get all these little canisters and you fill them with whatever you want to uh, put inside of them. So. supply canister with flashlight and compass. Uh, nylon woodland camo, uh, which is very much military, um, rain poncho, which can be both, you know, putting on your body and staying, keeping your clothes dry and everything from the nasty weather, or it could also be used for emergency shelter system as well. It uh, has holes in all the corners and everything, so put up with kite string, paracord, make yourself a little shelter system, uh, a little tent, if you will. Uh, then what else? Um, then uh, about two to 300 feet of military 550 nylon cord right here. Um, got a, heavy, a good, you know, slingshot, the um, thick rubber. 
I got a little bit of Ziploc bag. It's probably 150 little BBs to go with it. Uh, got a little big lighter right here. Got a little Smith's knife sharpener. Uh, fine and coarse for little pocket knives. I got another mini pocket knife right here. Uh, this is what you call uh, from survivallife.com um, uh, Everstrike match. It's pretty cool. It's a canister uh, with a reusable over and over again match. You fill this canister with lighter fluid and then what it is, it's like a ferrule rod wrapped with rope. Um, and then so, it's been soaked in lighter fluid so it might take a couple of times but Give me a little trouble this time. Last time it took like three tries and it lit. Almost got it there. There it goes. So reusable match over and over again. So another reason why I have the lighter fluid. Uh, then um, hip weapon for uh, so instead of a tomahawk. This is a military tomahawk, SP-16 Spax. Um, it's uniquely designed. Uh, you know, I can puncture like can canisters and stuff, you know, um, food cans and stuff. The holes in here are kind of unique. Uh, it's specially designed to be able to turn off universal water and uh, gas lines and stuff. Um, a sheath for it, leg sheath, so attach it to your belt, attach it to your leg. I have a multi-cam version of this too, so I could switch it up if I wanted to. So there's that. Um, this is the um, Army Military Ontario uh, 1095 carbon steel machete. This is the same machete that the Vietnam veterans used in the Vietnam War. I have uh, wrapped the handle with electrical tape uh, uh, very, very well for extra grip, and I also added a 550 lanyard so, uh, so for more secureness or also to take off uh, the paracord and use the paracord for something else in a survival situation if need be so and then the sheath is attached to the side of the backpack and then this is a Smith's machete knife sharpener and it even comes with a wire brush uh, right there um, push down to it pops up and pull out the wire brush so this is a axe tomahawk and machete smith's knife sharpener so good tool to have with all these knives and everything so that i believe concludes everything that this actual bug out bag uh, that i am selling for eighteen hundred twenty five dollars seventeen hundred dollars worth of products uh, comes with now i am going to go over a few additional items uh, as you know what to look at for substitutes and stuff so first off, I'd like to show this. This is from Flying Circle. It is a um, mini, like half backpack almost, uh, fully packed, you know, it's probably gonna weigh no more than 20, 25 pounds. Um, and this is a good uh, additional backpack to have, not only if you have like uh, kids who could carry it and, and put just some stuff, take some of your stuff out and put it in here for them, you know, and they can help carry some of the weight. Or just, um, I have my 72-hour, 60-pound pack in my back, uh, in my trunk at all times. But then what if I want to go hiking somewhere? I'm not going to go survival training. I'm not camping out. I just want to go for a good hike. I still want to be a little somewhat prepared. So I might have this empty half backpack uh, that's $55 from uh, Flying Circle. I got from the PX on Fort Carson. And go through the items in my survival bag and choose certain specific items, first aid kit, hammock, uh, fire starter, mini knife, whatever, uh, and add those items to this backpack so I'm still carrying a little bit. And if there's a rock slide, a flash flood, a forest fire, if there's certain, a situation happens while on my hank, I still have a little bit of supplies, but I'm not carrying a 60 pound you know, survival pack because I'm not camping out or surviving out in the wilderness. So having an additional half backpack is a good idea as well. 
So, other than that, instead of the Military Ontario machete, here's another high quality machete. They're a little bit more expensive though. Uh, this Ontario machete with the sheath is like a total of $45 from Amazon. So, but this is from zombietools.net out of uh, Montana. This specific blade, it was called the Hooligan. They don't make this one anymore as of right now. And uh, they do military discounts of like 10%. And so that with tax took them about six to eight weeks to create. And it was like 310 bucks for this. They make boot, uh, these kind of blades uh, look like old warrior Spartan, you know, kind of blades uh, that are the size of Bowie knives for 75 bucks, all the way to the full blown English knight swords or katana looking swords or butcher, giant butcher, uh, kitchen butcher knife uh, type of blades, uh, all the way up to $1,400. So, uh, really great blades, high quality made. I use this on the Pacific Northwest, chopped into uh, logs about, you know, that thick, 40, you know, V wax and went right through it. So it's not only a hand-to-hand -hand combat kind of weapon, but it's also a good quality machete as well. Um, the Parabellum is very similar. Uh, that is the name of another blade that they told me I could use for a bug out bag that is uh, similar to a uh, good sized Bowie knife. So um, another good, zombietools.net, another good thing to check out. And it comes either with a leather hip sheath uh, or it comes with a solid you know, hard plastic where you can put 550 cord through it, um, hard plastic sheath that I attach to the side of my bug out bag. Uh, let's see, uh, here's a little life hack for you. Uh, I actually had to use this up uh, about a year, two years ago, something like that, up in Steamboat Springs, Strawberry Hot Springs, about 10 miles outside of town. They have these wagon cabins and hobbit hole cabins. Hobbit hole cabins were like $65 and they come with a lantern and a gas heater, but the wagon cabins do not come with anything, a mattress, that's all it comes with. So you provide your bedding, you provide your lighting source, you provide your heat source. So I was using this nano like camp stove with the sterno things and I was using the non-scented candles. I went around and grabbed a bunch of pop cans and I did, there's a couple different versions. You can either do the eye slits, so bottom slit, 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 open up two doors and now you have a good size, put a candle, light it and it acts as a good lantern. Or the other version, a C slit, flatten the bottom, uh, do a C slit open it up one door and then you can take a couple of these candles put like two of them in there arizona cans probably three or four the light them all it's not only a mini a mini lantern system but a good little uh, heater as well i had about a dozen of these cans on a uh, wooden slab going around the entire interior of the wagon and it actually uh, after about an hour uh, heated up the wagon by like 40 degrees so a cool little um, do-it-yourself sort of survival technique for you. Uh, this pouch is about double the size of this Raiders tent right here. Um, looks like a circle pillow. It's actually an IBNS, so IBNS Cots tent. It's a spring-loaded pop-up one-person tent that looks like a giant, you know, twinky, a twinky shape. Um, with rain, it does not come uh, with a rain fly. You can order rain fly separately. A total of $220 comes with stakes. This attaches to a military cot uh, frame system as well. So I have a military cot in the back of my trunk, and I have this with it, and then I bought the rain fly with it as well, so I could either ground, quick, you know, pop up. I have to pull this out, and then it pretty much has a strap around it. Take this strap off and then this tent will just pop up. Now you have to watch the YouTube video on this specific tent to know exactly how to fold it back up properly to get it back to this size to be able to fit it back in that pouch. Otherwise you're never going to get it to the proper size to fit it back in that pouch and that's a pain in the butt. So there's a specific way to fold this type of tent. Uh, if I, now this tent I would also recommend, there's a newer tent from of uh, these that are made from both this tent and this tent, Raiders and IBNS, are made from KatomaOutdoor.com. They have, came up with a newer version of this IBNS tent called a Badger's Tent. 
very similar to this, but it has a built-in rain fly into the tent, and you pretty much just um, unhook the rain fly portion and roll it up, and it has straps, you know, where they're all rolled up. So there's a newer version. Um, and then if uh, not those three different tents, then connected to the bottom of my bug out bag, what I use is this green stuff sack pack right here, right there. That is from um, Krua Outdoors, uh, and that is a Krua hybrid two-in-one tent. It is both, it could be a one-person ground tent, or it can be a hammock tent as well, and it comes with stakes and rain fly. So it's a great system. I'll show you pictures of that on my TV at the very end. Uh, this flashlight, great to have in your vehicle. I personally think every vehicle should come with this. It is a 9-in-1, not fully waterproof, rainproof, 9-in-1 hand cranking LED flashlight. So, hand cranking. It, uh, the flashlight itself, really high quality, super lightweight, doesn't even weigh a pound, it's like, you know, maybe half an ounce. Um, magnet in the front, and the, or, and the reason I do that is because it has this, watch this right here, so add it to the outside of your car, you hold that same button down, you have an alarm system. Uh, you have a mini uh, radio on this one, for one person to listen to. The only th you can get another version of this without the radio, so it's a couple bucks cheaper. Um, seat belt cutter, window breaker with a uh, little cover for the window breaker. Uh, lanyard and compass on the bottom and also a USB connector two different size USB connectors so I could get a USB connected to my phone start hand cranking I'm pretty much charging my phone from hand cranking system I believe it was in the 30 to 40 dollar range for one of these I think I think with shipping and tax it was like 43 bucks I want to say from Amazon so it's made from Ivation so another good system to have uh, let's see, instead of this entrenchy tool, if you want to go lighter weight, uh, six in one um, entrenching tool, because of this handle, this has like a bottle cap opener on the side here, and all I do is that, and then I got a really lightweight shovel. This is what I have in my bug out bag. It did come also with a, um, like a tomahawk axe head and a hammer at the uh, other end and nail puller. But I got a better system for the axe head kind of thing, tomahawk system. So I got rid of that um, tomahawk handle. And this, you actually push down and it comes out and it's a little saw blade. So, like that. So there's a six in one version for super cheap at Sports and Warehouse. Uh, there's a nine in one version on Amazon, nationalparkdepot.com, some surplus stores. Those are about 18 bucks a piece. They're stronger metal. And it's, there's three more additions to it. So uh, six, ver six in one version or a nine in one version. So you could do either or. It comes with this little pouch and then you put your shovel head inside of it. And then there's also another little pouch for where the ax head goes. Uh, but because I got rid of the tomahawk uh, ax head for that because I bought this handle with this multifunctional axe head from Klax, K-L-A-X. So it has thumb jumping, little D-ring thing, hammer, ruler, the axe head itself, gut hook, hex bits for three quarters, five eighths, half, three eighths, and a quarter. And then even, uh, once I attach it to this uh, thing, stick it in there, and then like go opposite direction, take a stick, and they have another blade right here near the bottom that I can go against and create like a spearhead for a stick. Has a patented unique uh, attaching system, clamping system I should say. So there's that. Now you could also get a regular stick and put a, a you know good slice down the middle and then use the same, so just have the axe head on hand, not the handle. 
create your own handle out of a, a thick stick and then it tightens down so now I have a good quality axe head hammer system gut hook spear maker hex bit you know uh, um, wrench so another good thing uh, I forget how much these are exactly because um, for a lot of these items, BioLite, which I'll go over here in a second, Clax, um, and other items, Luminade is another item. Um, certain items, you can always, for veterans, you can get military discounts. Oh, Zombie Tools is another one. Zombie Tools is 10%. Um, I think Luminade's 10 or 20%. BioLite's 10 or 20%. Clax is veteran uh, company owned. You get 50% off. So. You know, this did not cost me as much as some other people. And you can even get titanium versions and stuff, too, which are more expensive. Uh, firebox. So instead of the Firebox Nano, there's also the Firebox 5 can. So this is the Gen 1. There's a newer version, Gen 2. Uh, with the carrying case and extension grill top to put, like, a T-bone steak or two hamburger patties on, uh, it's about 100 bucks. So I will pull up the video and show you the little intro video on the Firebox 5 folding cam. So it's a little heavier, uh, but still pretty compact, you know, and everything. So this is what I have in my bug out bag uh, in tandem with the BioLite, B-I-O-L-I-T-E. This is a $150 system right here. There's another, uh, a couple other versions. And this is a thermal regenerating pretty much teapot kettle. So I uh, fill it up, there's a minimum and maximum, heat it up, and then there's a um, tracker system that tells me how much uh, heat I'm generating, if it's too damn hot, and then how much power am I generating, um, four bars and all that. It's already, it has an ba internal battery, so it's holding a charge, and then once I turn that on, give it a sec, and then you get this wired tap reading light. So LED tap reading light, this uh, comes separately, but it, it comes with this adjustable like reading light wired USB connector to get it away from flames. So you can connect your USB, but you don't have to worry about your USB cord melting or something like that. So that's a pretty cool system. So buy a light. So that's what I have with my bug out bag. Uh, footwear. So having good footwear and a good winter summer combo clothing in my bug out bag when i create a video updated video for this i have a summer bdu with a uh, woodland camouflage old military reserve uniform and the summer versions there were a summer and winter back then and the summer versions had a lighter fabric to them so i could have a fully bo a full body covered uniform clothing that protects me from the elements but uh, then if it gets cold, whether it be nighttime or winter hits or whatever, I have Poly Pro, like, which, which is like a um, you know, sweater top and uh, a sweater pant type of material. And so I put underwear on, put the Poly Pros on for winter, then put the uniform on top of, over that. I got gator neck, I got fleece cap, I got gloves, I got goggles. I have everything I need and then good footwear. So that I do not have this inside my bug out bag, but I have it in my in the boot box still, the original box, and then I put socks inside of my boots and they're ready to go. So different types of boot suggestions uh, would be uh, the original uh, rugged outback. These are good hiking boots. Uh, you know, Danner or Belleville uh, type of boots. This is you know these were my uniform boots in the army. Um, they last a long time, almost two years a piece. And then what I currently have bought, and they're a little pricey from Bass Pro, but these are Redhead, all-terrain, all-weather Gore-Tex boots. These versions that go up to about your ankle uh, are about 140, and then they um, go up past your ankle version like these, uh, but th this brand are 180 at Bass Pro. So, uh, now besides for socks, instead of just normal wool socks, I would also uh, recommend Cross Point from Amazon, 35 bucks a, uh, 30 to 35 bucks a piece, uh, depending on size, 100% uh, waterproof wool socks made in the Pacific Northwest. 
uh, and then gloves, the best quality gloves I've ever had in my life, especially living here in Colorado during the winter, Churchill. Churchill uh, Company gloves from Centralia, Washington, not far from where I'm originally from. Uh, deer uh, hide leather gloves, fully 100% waterproof with like um, elk skin fur, like from like sheep fur kind of stuff, interior. So it's 100%, you know, waterproof, leather, and it's also keeps your, I mean, I've been out negative 15 degrees for four hours, military ranges, and my hands never got cold. So they're a little pricey. They can be anywhere from $50 into the $200 range, depending on the um, type and size. They got motorcycle versions, work glove versions, uh, versions that, you know, have the longer all the way up the arm versions. So Churchill, great gloves. I hope to get myself another pair because I lost one of my gloves in while visiting Manhattan, New York. So, uh, I think that that is about it besides, you know, um, thumb drive uh, to uh, do a scanning version of all your important documentation, have that thumb drive encrypted. Experts say for money, have cash money, minimum of 500 up to $1,000, mostly small bills, one or two large bills, hidden in multiple locations throughout your um, uh, bag. So if someone finds one st uh, you know, uh, place of your cash, all your cash is not in one location. So that is a good uh, idea. Uh, adding clothing, adding personal hygiene, um, uh, sleeping bag, uh, that is a, you know, a $15, 50 uh, degree sleeping bag. I have both on my personal bug out bag, a 50 degree antibacterial snug pack, um, bug fully faced and closed bug netted um, sleeping bag, and I also have a 20 degree antibacterial winter sleeping bag as well. So depending on the, what the weather's like, I can choose either or. I recently uh, found out and researched this uh, from Enlightened Development uh, site, uh, these uh, homemade, handmade like sleeping bag quilts. So I'm looking at maybe getting one of those made for me, trying it out, and if it works better than my sleeping bags, then um, getting getting rid of these sleeping bags and uh, uh, changing out with a quilt. So there's another good idea. Um, for vehicles, um, tactical seat covers with the like military strap webbing on the back, so you get military um, strap webbed uh, pouches and add them to the back, and that's a good thing too. Uh, the, the add tools, first aid, emergency food and water, your um, um, uh, jumper cables, flashlights. So uh, using the back of your uh, seat uh, of um, your uh, of in your vehicle to store a bunch of gear. That's another good thing that you could do, and I'll show you pictures of one of those too. So. Um, uh, another good website on Facebook, uh, Primal Survivor, uh, Survival, Primal Survival uh, Facebook has a lot of great articles uh, on, you know, types of wood, types of plants for medicinal purposes, how to pack bug out bags, offer capabilities, uh, articles from like Syrian refugees and what they learn being out in the middle of nowhere, being pretty much homeless, traveling, um, uh, articles from Hurricane Katrina. Um, you know, what to have in your, what are those essentials in a bug out bag, all that kind of stuff. You know, how to make furniture from wooden sticks out in the wilderness, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, so yeah, there's that. And now I'm going to grab the camera and show you guys some other cool products. Okay. This is a BioLite camp stove uh, system, good for two or more people in a group. Comes with a six liter kettle pot, uh, an extension grill top. Uh, there's the BioLite camp stove, internal battery, thermal electro charge, so it's uh, charging from the fire. You can actually compact it, take down the battery, put it in the stove, take down the stove, put it inside the kettle pot, put the lid on it so it's all compact. Then there's the grill top. And then put the uh, kettle pot on top. There's a plastic bowl that comes inside of the kettle pot as well. 
And you even got a $15 uh, coffee press that, go, that can go inside the kettle pot to make your own coffee too. So this system is usually 240 bucks for this combo set and it's $200 right now, $15 for this or that LED reading light thing. Uh, here's an example of that um, tactical seat cover. Here is an example of the, that's the Raiders tent that comes with this 24 hour survival bug out bag I'm trying to sell. So that's what it looks like. And the thing on the seat cover. This is a motoped survival, uh, it's a bicycle slash dirt bike. They don't make this specific version anymore with all these additional um, like special forces stuff, a crossbow, tomahawk, shovel, rope throwing knives on the gas tank, uh, LED light system, but they do have the, the rest of the version with the gas tanks on the side, metal framing on the back to put a backpack. Um, it's like $3,200, $3,500 for one of these things, so bicycling. They said with, uh, you know, flat land, filled gas tank, filled gas cans on both sides, that's like 400 miles worth of travel uh, fuel right there. Um, Here's the crew a hybrid tent that I have with my bug out bag. So it's a ground tent, it's a hammock tent. Uh, you can take two of them, put them side by side, zip them together down the middle, connecting them, and tear down the interior wall. This is the IBNS Cots tent that I have in the trunk of my car. The spring loaded uh, one, it's like shaped like a Twinkie. So that's what it looks like on the ground. That's what it looks like attached to a hammock frame. This is the Badger's tent, the newer one to the uh, IBNS tent. How you can roll up the um, built-in rain fly. This was my best friend Anna's bug out bag that I built for her. Uh, then from survive, uh, pr pr uh, primitive or primal survivor or survival website from Facebook that gives you all these different, you know, the um, things to show up different forms of shelter, articles, fire starters. Um, how to make a like a TP um, poncho um, smoking system to smoke fish, uh, a fabric um, three layer uh, water filter system with grass, sand, and charcoal in that order. How to um, a medicinal plants to watch out for and what can they be used for? What type of edible mushrooms are there out in the wilderness? How to make your own you like sticks and piano wire, little um, stove cooking a steak, how to cut a fish up properly, how to make your own structures from nature, how to, uh, the you know, smarter way to pack your backpack. Different ways for fire. How to make your own camp shower. Your um, rope bed shelving system, your own chair out in the woods, a dog bug out bag, doggy bug out bag, a tr a trigger snare modified for fish, basic survival skills, posi positive mental attitude, water, food, shelter, fire, different types of wood and how do they burn, different camping system, uh, cooking systems, so things like that. And then lastly, the Firebox. Firebox 5, which is what I have with my survival bug out bag. The Firebox is a true folding stove with hinged panels rather than separate parts that require assembly. This specially designed hole pattern serves several functions. It isolates this hottest portion of the stove, preventing expanding material from causing warpage, the inside row of holes provides position points for both the Trangia spirit burner and the Trangia gas burner attachment. 
This new top position for the Trangia creates the perfect one inch headspace between the jets and the bottom of your pot. The lower row of holes provides primary combustion air. The top row of holes provides secondary combustion air. But that totally illustrates that secondary combustion air. The diamond shaped holes provide position points for sterno fuel and for alternative spirit burners. This outside row of holes provides position points for the optional adjustable fire grate. It's awesome for using wood pellets or for charcoal when using one of the optional grill plates. That's the extension grill right there. Cook a T-bone steak with two hamburger patties on. We've added these new position points allowing the ash pan to be inverted to create an adjustable air damper. We've also added side feed fuel delivery ports. The upwards angle creates flame velocity and crossing the sticks creates turbulence. We've updated the hole pattern in the fire grate, adding the expansion chamber and making the holes much larger with one right in the center to provide combustion air to Swedish fire torch pre-fueling setups. The boil plate boxes in the heat around either a 40 ounce stainless steel water bottle or a space saver cup. This is the solid fuel tablet position. You move your ash pan up to the top, leave a space for combustion air, your solid fuel goes right at the back, air comes up from the bottom, combusts, and then exhausts out the front. Slots on the top, combined with the fire sticks, you can do accommodate that with smaller pots and uh, cups. The fire sticks can be used to handle the fire shish box kebab. even when it's hot. That way you can make position adjustments. With an optional second set of fire sticks, you can put your firebox in this special horizontal baking position. This allows you to use your zebra loop handle pot as a camp oven. You can use your optional grill plate as an oven rack. I've cooked cake, cookies, and even bread this way. That only comes originally with two sticks. You have to order two more for the extras. So there is that uh, system right there. That was the Gen 2 Firebox 5 camp stove. This is not a cloud. So that is pretty much this 24 hour survival bug out bag. Some additional. Uh, you know, think about nice to have like items to add uh, to it. And like I said, I'm trying to sell this entire bug out bag system right here. Comes with everything right here except for this. Um, everything right here comes in this bug out bag. Uh, weighs 38 pounds. Put it on. It feels like 20 uh, and seventeen hundred dollars worth of products. Selling this bug out bag fully filled and complete for 1820 if you want to throw a little extra my way I'll donate to you know one of the natural disasters that's going on right now like I said before I live in Colorado Springs off exit 139 on Fountain if you're interested hit me up on Facebook Christopher.Wanamaker at yahoo.com um, or through YouTube or Facebook uh, or and it's also on let go and offer up um, showing it just like this laid out for the 1825 with a listing of all the products. So um, that's all I have. All right, uh, thank you YouTubers. You guys have a good day and I hope you found this uh, um, video and this bug out bag interesting and informative. All right, thanks, bye.